guys, it's Maisie from Sholo Public Library, and we are back in the Sholo TV studio doing another adult DIY project for you guys. So you might be watching this on your TV, which is Sparklight Channel 56 or HG, HD Channel 1056, or you might be watching on the library's Facebook page, which is Sholo Public Library, or on the Sholo TV YouTube page. No matter how you're watching, we're happy that you're here with us again. I think this is probably the sixth or seventh project that we've done and hopefully we'll keep it going for you guys through the winter time. So today, if you couldn't tell, we are making these super cute little pumpkin candy jars. I've got two different styles of jars and I'll explain why that is once we start getting into it because it's a little bit of a story. So if you picked up your kit from the library or if you're doing this at home, I'm going to talk about the things that you will need for your project. You're going to need a terracotta pot, just a regular one like this. Most of the time when you buy them, they come with the top and the bottom, just like this. I think this is a six inch pot. You're also going to need a top for your pot. So there's two different tops in the examples, but in theory, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna wanna have a bottom for the terracotta pot that actually fits on your pot. This one is too small, as you can see. It should kinda sit like right on the top, sort of like this one does, where it sits right flush with it, and so I'll explain Explain what happened and how you can avoid that later. But you might also, if you picked up a kit or if you're looking for things in town, this is one of the lids, this is this lid. This is what it looks like before it's painted. And then this lid, which is a little glass sort of candle holder type thing, is this lid. So you potentially will have one of these lids. The original project was a terracotta lid. Then you're gonna need some paint. I just used regular acrylic paint. This is just apple barrel, um, regular gloss acrylic paint. This one's pumpkin orange, but any orange acrylic paint you have. And then this one is apple barrel, regular gloss acrylic. That's nutmeg brown. And so any brown, any orange paint. Then you're going to need your little top, which is actually a drawer pull, this little brown part here. So I bought these online so they came in like a big pack, but if you were just doing this for you, you could potentially go to somewhere like Ace and just buy one of these little um, toppers here. It's gonna have a hole in it because obviously it's meant to go with a dresser or something like that, and it's probably gonna come with the screws. Obviously you won't need those, you're just gonna need the top little thing. Then you're going to need some pipe cleaners, or if you're fancy, these are called chenille sticks, in case nobody knew that. I guess I'd probably heard that before, but I didn't realize it until they came from Amazon, and there's this big yellow label on them that says chenille sticks, and I'm like, what is that? Oh yeah, it's a pipe cleaner. So you're just gonna need a regular green pipe cleaner, or if you want to use a different color, some of the kits I gave out, I had brown or black. It's just going to be for your little pumpkin, leafy, viney parts. You're also going to need some brushes. If you picked up a kit from the library, you got a sponge brush. Um, these are just super easy because they're really cheap, they're easy to clean, and you can buy them in a pack of like 10 at the dollar store. You don't need a fancy brush to paint this. And then I also used a little brush. This one's obviously really old, but I used this brush to paint the drawer pull because this big one was just really hard to kind of get in all the nooks and crannies. So you're just gonna want some kind of smaller brush. They make sponge brushes that are even smaller than this and they make ones that are bigger. So you can pick whatever kind of brush you want for your project. The last thing you're going to need is a drain hole cover. This came with my pot when I ordered them online. It came with, I think there was 12 pots in the box, so there was 12 of these. So if you don't have this that comes with your pot normally when you go to the store, obviously it doesn't, because if you're using your pot, you want there to be a hole in the bottom to drain when you're using it to plant something. But when you use this as a candy dish, obviously if the hole is there, stuff is gonna potentially fall out the bottom. So you can use, I mean, anything. This is just like a little piece of plastic. You could cover it with felt, you could cover it with probably just with paper, candy's not very heavy, something to cover the hole that's in your pot. And then they also came with these little felt stick-on things. 
Um, I know you can find these at the dollar store at Walmart. My pot, of course, came, like I said, with these two things that came with it. You could use cork, you could use felt. You're just gonna wanna put something on the bottom. This one has it, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So that your pot is not gonna scrape on anything that you put it onto. Um, sometimes coasters will come with these, so you probably have something at home that you can use for both the drain cover and the bottom if you don't have these little um, sticker things. So, the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, when you start your project, is you're going to want to paint your pot. I painted, when I did mine, I turned it upside down like this, and then I had my paint, and I used the brush, and I started at the bottom, and then I painted all the way around twice, two coats to cover. The orange color is going to be different depending on what kind of paint you have because this is already sort of an orangish brown. So like if you notice, like on this top I had, it's like really, really orange because it looked like this when I started. So it's a different color than the pot is. It's a little bit more orange when you see them next to each other. And that's because this was a blonde color when I started and this pot was this color. So it's gonna be sort of varying shades of orange depending on what you're doing. So then what I did once it was dry completely, which I will tell you took a while, it took about an hour because this is a porous surface. Some of the paint gets absorbed so it takes a little bit longer. So you're gonna have to be patient. I turned it over and then I just painted this top ring on the pot just so that it looked more finished when you're looking down at it. I didn't paint the inside of the pot because I didn't know the candy, candy wrappers, the paint, depending on if your candy's wrapped or not. If it touches the terracotta, it's going to be fine. But if you have unwrapped candy that's touching the paint, I don't know if that would go over so well. So I didn't paint the inside, so just two coats on the outside. Then, of course, if you had your terracotta pot top that actually fit, you would paint that. And when I did this originally, not knowing it wasn't going to fit, I painted the inside and the outside, and that should be fine. Because when you, you have to think, when you take the lid off, you're going to see in there. So you're going to want it to look finished. So your top, you're going to paint both sides. So let's get rid of our, our loser terracotta pot that didn't fit and then we'll talk about some of these other things. So this one is the one that was done with the wooden disc. So then what I did was I painted the, um, the top part with two coats to cover it, waited for it to dry, painted the bottom part with two coats, waited for that to dry, and I also painted my drawer pull. Um, you don't have to paint the bottom of your drawer pull if you don't want to, because obviously it's gonna be glued down, you're not gonna see it. I went ahead and painted mine just because, it's not gonna hurt it, since you're not gonna be using the little hole with the screws to put it on, it's okay to paint over it. Then once everything is dry, you're gonna start gluing it together. So on this one, this is the one, I think I like this one better because the top fits a little bit more flush. In the original example, this is what it looks like. So if you find a terracotta bottom that fits, you're gonna want it to be flush like this one. So that would be a six inch bottom and the one that came with my pot was four. So it's too small. So if you hold them up next to each other, like this, it's just a tiny, tiny bit too small. So you'd want the terracotta pot that's a six inch instead of a four. If you go to the store, or if I had gone to the store, I probably would have figured that out, but I ordered them online because I couldn't find them anywhere in town. So if you go to the physical store and you buy your terracotta pot, you're going to look like a freak and people are going to stare at you, but you're going to want to walk around the store with it and make sure that it fits before you buy a whole bunch of them, which is a mistake that I made. And trust me, I was walking around the store, I'm like picking up dishes and all kinds of weird stuff trying to see what would fit. And this ended up fitting perfectly. So this is actually, they're calling it a candle holder that I got from the Dollar Tree. So this was only a dollar. And it ended up fitting perfectly on the top, which was great. So when you put it up, this side has the little thingies on it for the feet. So you want that side to be up so that it lays flush. Otherwise it's gonna look weird if you put it on that way. So you want it to be this way. 
And when you paint this, since it's glass, if you have special paint that's for glass or paint markers that are for glass, that's going to stick a little bit better. When I did the acrylic paint, you have to be careful because what I did is I started with the inner side, which is smooth. That was okay but I made the mistake of not waiting for it to completely dry and so then what happened is um, I went in for a second coat and I basically just rubbed off the first coat so when you go to do this part if you end up with this lid you want to very carefully paint your first layer and you're gonna paint the lip on here too then you have to wait for it to like completely, completely, completely dry. I got tired of waiting after about 45 minutes, so I got out a blow dryer to dry it. And it's glass, so you wanna be careful if you do that. You don't wanna have the blow dryer like right on it, cause that could be bad. Then what I had to do with the second coat is I kind of, I had the paint on my first coat and then I had the second coat and I sort of like dabbed it on with the brush, just kind of like this. That way I wasn't rubbing it off. I was just kind of adding another layer. And the good thing is that because it's glass, once I had the bottom part done, from the top, it looks orange because it reflects up on the color. So then when I turned it over, and of course I peeled the sticker off, when I did this part, since it's sort of pebbly, it's porous, all I had to do was one layer of paint, and because this one was already painted and it was sort of reflecting through here, it looks really orange. So this side has two coats, and including the little lip, you wanna make sure you get the lip all the way around. And then this side only has one, because it already looked orange. So I just did it to cover it so it wasn't plain glass. So if I had to pick between these two, this one is easier because it's wood and you don't have to worry about the paint doing anything weird, but I just think it looks a little awkward. It does have a lid and he's still really cute if that's all you can find or that's all you have at home. But if I had to pick, I would probably pick this one and then obviously my first choice would have been the terracotta lid, but since that didn't work out, if I had to pick between these two, I'd probably pick the little glass lid. So then all you're gonna do is glue on your drawer pull, which is hot glue, and then I took my pipe cleaner and I just wound it around my finger when I put it on there. So I just went like this and wound it up around my finger on one side and then wound it up on the other side so that it made it kind of curly like that. And then when I put it on, I sort of wrapped it around. So you're just gonna, like if I wanted to put another one on here, you're just gonna kind of wrap it around and then I glued it in place so that it would stay and make your little vines. You can put any kind of pipe cleaner or leaves or whatever you find that you wanna decorate your pumpkin with on there to make him a little bit sassy. The sassy pumpkin. So I'm gonna show you guys how I put on the little drain cover. So of course this one doesn't have the drain cover. Like I said, you wanna cover it. So all I'm gonna do is very carefully, so I don't burn my finger, put some hot glue inside here. Maybe my hot glue, uh, glue sticks a little bit long. I'm just gonna put some glue all the way around the edge. And then I'm just gonna very carefully put the little um, plastic thing on. You don't want to hold your finger over where the plastic grate is, right on the hot glue, obviously. Be very careful. You could also probably use your brush or something and kind of push it down if you didn't want to burn your finger. Um, the glue guns that we use at the library, which if you don't have one at home and you need one, especially if you have kids and you want to do stuff like this with them, we have low temperature glue guns, which work just as good as a high temperature, but I think it's only, like 100 degrees instead of like 200 something degrees. So the chances of you burning your finger is a lot less. I'm not gonna say it doesn't hurt, cause it does, but you won't like burn your flesh off if you're losing a low temperature glue gun where with a big glue gun, I've gotten third degree burns before. So you have to be careful. So you're just gonna hold that in place. So now when you put your candy in, it's not gonna fall out the hole. Like if you had a sucker or little M&Ms or something, nothing's gonna fall out through the hole in your pot cause it's covered. Then you're going to turn it over and these little things that I have are self adhesive but you would just hot glue them on if you were using felt or cork or whatever you have. I'm just going to peel them off and I'm going to stick them on the edge. 
You want to try to make them as even as possible. That way your pot doesn't sit crooked. So you want to kind of line them up on there so that they're in line on the corners. I'm only going to put four, but if you're worried about your pot scraping on your counter or on something, you could, I mean, you could put them all the way around. You could put as many as you want. I'm going to put those on there like that. So my drain hole cover is covering the hole and then my little um, felt foam things are going to be on there so that when I push my, if my pot's pushing across, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's not making any noises, which is a good sign. My last little tip that I will give you guys, because I did this, so I know somebody else is bound to do it. When I painted this, I got impatient, of course, and I didn't wait for it to totally dry. And I was so excited, I wanted to see what it looked like. So I, of course I went like this and I put it on and it got stuck. So make sure that before you go to use this, everything is dry. If you're using this glass thing, like I said, you're gonna wanna either use a blow dryer at a safe distance so that it doesn't break, or you're just gonna have to be really patient. I'd say maybe overnight for it to dry before you actually put it on top of your lid. Luckily, I was able to use a little knife and like pry it off, and then I just painted this again so that it was smooth um, and it wasn't a complete disaster, but there's potential for that. So you just gotta, you gotta to have some patience like when you're growing your pumpkin it takes months and months when you're doing this project but it's super fun I also on Pinterest I saw when I was looking up this project I saw some that were apples that might work out better for you because then you'd be able to find the pots when they're in the store which is usually like in the springtime unless you live somewhere where there's like a specialty store because um, finding these in the fall I will tell you was difficult to find the pots that's why I ended up finding them online so, I hope you guys like this project. I'm not sure what we're doing next month, but since it's November, I'm gonna try to find something kind of festive, maybe for Thanksgiving. If you guys have ideas, you can send them over to me at the library, or if you see me at the library, you can tell me about it. Um, Pinterest is our friend, remember that, all kinds of fun stuff on Pinterest. So, I'll be letting you guys know on our Facebook page what the project's gonna be and when we're gonna be filming again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh.